Let's dive right in. Today we're going to be very quickly setting up the visible spectrum, or the rainbow, for use in materials. I'm going to drag out a new window, change to the shader editor, close the side panel, and with Shift A, add in a converter color ramp. Very simply, I'm going to grab the left or black toggle here. I'm going to bring this all the way up to one, and with hue saturation value, I'll bring this all the way down until I essentially have one for every value, or red. On the other toggle with the white one, I'm just going to grab this and bring it to essentially any purple. Now, if I change from RGB to HSV or hue saturation value, I can change the type from near to clockwise. And this has very quickly given me a full visible spectrum or rainbow gradient. Now, there are a few things that I'd like to be able to access. I want to be able to go back to RGB and then take advantage of some of the different modes there. To do that, I'm going to hit plus, drag this to just about dark blue where it was, so about 0.8 and then I'm going to make this a dark blue. For some unusual reason, the transition between green and purple will actually fade out to a very unsaturated value if you don't do this step. So it's very important just to add this in. You can also add additional control points by simply hitting plus a few times, grab this little arrow here for tools, and then you have options such as distribute stops from left or distribute stops evenly. We can now change back to RGB and this gives us access to the different falloff modes. So linear by default, but we can also use ease to smooth this transition out. We can use B spline, which is starting to show that desaturation I mentioned. And we can, of course, also use constant, which has now given us very discrete colors. And if we want all of them, we can simply change to distribute from left instead of distribute evenly. So what can we actually use this for? If I go ahead and start by just plugging this into the shader and coming into the visible material preview, you can see our cube has chosen one of these, yellow, because we've set it to just about there. But if we go ahead, hit Shift A, choose Input, Object Info, and then put Random into the factor, if I were to now duplicate this cube, every time I duplicate it, it's going to assign a different random factor. So this is a very quick way to generate a whole spectrum of different random colored objects. And of course, I can apply this to both geometry nodes and particle systems. And I'll do a little bit of setup and then come back and show that. So here we could see a very simple geometry node setup where I've simply taken an underlying plane. You can see it right there. I've added a point distribute with a Poisson distribution so that I can actually separate them all. A simple point scale to make the cubes kind of the size that I want and I can adjust that however I wanted to. And I can also change the instance object. In this case, I've selected our cube, which has that random material. So each single one of these cubes will be assigned its own random material based on our visible light spectrum. I can also do the same thing with particle system, and I'll be back in just a second to show that. Now we're back looking at a particle system example. So I added a simple plane, created an emitter particle system. All I did from here was add a little bit of velocity in the Z direction, change the gravity to be zero. And for the render, I chose our cube and also gave a scale and a little bit of variation. So if I go ahead and press play, you can see I now have a selection of rainbow cubes essentially flying up, and you could use this for other things. The last example I'd like to discuss is using our color ramp to create various patterns for materials, especially for gradients. It can also be used to generate things like heat maps. So I'm going to simply add in a plane. I'm going to come back to the shader editor. I'm going to add in the material that we had before. And this time, instead of choosing object info random, I'm going to unhook this, delete that. And I'm going to go to edit preferences, add ons, make sure that I have node wrangler enabled. And from here, Node Wrangler, from here, I'm simply going to select my color ramp, hit Control T. I'll bring all of these to the side, change back to Ease, and then I'm going to grab the image texture here, hit Shift S, and choose some sort of other texture. For our purposes today, we're going to go with a gradient. And now if we come in and look, we can see we have a gradient texture going across. We could also use constant here. And once we change through some of the coordinates, you'll see different options for this. So with UV or with generated coordinates, you're going to get a straight pattern right across. If we change to a different type of gradient, such as diagonal, this will still give a even distribution. But if we want to do something more like a radial gradient or a spherical gradient, we'll have to change to object coordinates to get that in the center. And of course, we can change options such as ease or linear, and that will give us smoother fall off. We can adjust these toggles at any time, but you now have a very quick way of making this setup and applying it to a number of different things. Hopefully this is a quick and useful way to help you add a random selection of colors to your materials. And if you happen to work in a field such as solar cells, which is where I come from, 
then you can now add the visible spectrum in some capacity using gradients and materials to all kinds of different things in your scenes. So, as always, thanks for coming out. If you enjoyed this, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, look forward to a few more figure recreations coming soon, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.